All right, I think we're going to go ahead and get started with the seminar portion of tonight's events. First of all, thank y'all all for coming out. Let's get started with some fishing advice. Uh, Dave, Cody, I mean, it's been, for me, kind of hit and miss. It's, it's almost like it's not so much that the techniques change every day, but I can't seem to get on the same fish day after day at all. I'm really having to be versatile and diverse and kind of play the conditions by the day. What are y'all seeing out there? Okay, this week was was really an interesting week and as well as last week. Y'all see what the wind has done in the past two weeks. We went through a stretch where there was no wind at all for like seven, eight days in a row. Notice what the water temperatures did. They were up in the 90, 92, I saw 93 degrees, all right? Do you notice what those fish do when the water gets that hot? What do they do? They start rising up off the bottom. And what I started noticing was that a lot of those fish were getting into trees, closer to trees and holding tight to trees, right? And so that's what I started noticing. Well, then right after all that happened, we got a bunch of rain, we got wind, and there was white caps out here to the go-go. The water surface temp dropped some eight degrees. It would drop back down to 84, 85 degrees. And then we're tooling around the lake looking, and where do you think? Now you're seeing those arcs on the bottom. And that's how we started catching them then. They'd come up on the points, and I prefer to look at them late in the day because I know they move up on those points late in the day. And that's what we were really focused on. I didn't start any of my guide trips till 11 o'clock. And we fished till about seven. He has a question. I have to, I have to, I have to, to cull it first. So with the weather we've had today, cooler air temperatures, more cloud cover, uh, it's going to be a little bit warm tomorrow, but some intermittent cloud cover. Are you anticipating fish for this weekend, for this tournament tomorrow, to be lower or higher? Well, that's a good question. And I didn't get on the water today because my clients today decided to reschedule because of the rain. But I looked at the lake level, which rose four inches. I mean, uh, a half an inch, which means that that surface temp's bound to have cooled. All right, so if that surface temps cools, that water is actually going to sink. Any wind at all is going to turn that up and it's going to fall. So I suspect that those fish are going to still move to the bottom. Yesterday, when we guided, the water was 87, 88 degrees. If it falls to 86, then I got no problem finding them on the bottom. Now, the plan, the plan for tomorrow for me in this tournament is going to be a little bit different than, than most. And I mean, I've got different layers that I'm going to fish in it in order to target those fish. And what time's the thing over with tomorrow? 3 p.m. Oh, yeah, 3 p.m. So from daylight in the morning until 3 p.m., those fish are going to be at different levels all throughout the day. I'm not going to stay on one pattern all day long. It's going to fluctuate all day till all the way to the end. I ain't going to tell you exactly how I'm going to do it either. So, uh, oh, 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 I'm competing. I'm playing. So who knows? I haven't really went after the unders in the past three weeks. He's going to throw a drop shot. <laughs> A drop shot will play a big role in the event, but I haven't really looked for the unders, but we finished eighth in a media bass about two weeks ago, three weeks ago, and we're going to fish the same identical pattern we did in that drop shot, more than likely, uh, in that tournament using a drop shot. So, so uh, I might be on one of Cody Mays' spots, but anyway, focus on... Watch what those fish do on the bottom. See if they're setting on the bottom or setting up higher. If they're setting up higher, then find you some trees. I talked to a buddy of mine today. He had uh, six, seven, eight, uh, six pounders out of one tree in 20 foot of water. And that's exactly what happens when those fish, the water gets warmer, whatever the case, those fish all tucked up tight to that tree. They were throwing a trick worm, a magnum trick worm in that tree. And they caught uh, seven, six pounders out of it. So that just gives you an idea of what those fish will do. Maze, you got anything you want to add to that? He covered it pretty well. He did cover it. I mean, I got a few things. Come on. Uh, you know, I'm outside the box. Right? Lake Fort guy Cody Mays, who will also be competing in tomorrow's event, but he also throws a drop shot. So <laughs> that's what won it last year. I'm just saying. You are. You he is actually the defending champion of this event. Hey, he beat you last year, just so you know. Like, I wish, I don't even compete, so I can just talk trash on his belt. He beat you last year, just so you know. All right, what are we doing tomorrow, Maze? All right, dynamite and rotary foam. There we go. That's all I can do. No, I'm just kidding. Y'all know I'm an outside the box tanker. Um, so, the fish are not, you know, he's talking about how they're in trees and stuff like that. They are, but they are also in places that you would not even think. I mean, you could just be graphing and all of a sudden, boom, there's a, a school of them. Uh, it could be on deep flats of 20, 15, 20 foot deep. Nothing there to even hold them, but they're there. 
Uh, they're kind of acting a little strange right now, like, uh, like Billy was saying. Uh, but, you know, it, it is a grind first part of the morning. It gets better throughout the day. But, uh, you know, maybe with this weather, uh, hopefully it will get better in the morning. So, Same stuff, bait, shaky head, drops out, mess up. Yeah, shaky head, um, uh, jig, jig working good. Um, big jig? Or yeah, big jig, uh, three quarter ounce, one, uh, one ounce. Um, and then drop shot. Drop shot. Yeah, of course a drop shot. What you said about the in-between places is pretty cool. So I hate that, guys. I hate that when fish get on unpredictable areas, and there is some of that going on. And that happens a lot to us in the fall, right? We think about in fall, those fish get really locked on the bait fish, and as bait fish travel throughout the creeks, we lose them sometimes. And because they just get in between, they get scattered, they're just in random places. And so what I like to do in fall is I like to look for good stop sign type of structures. And what I mean by that is some mid-depth features going in and out of mouths of pockets and in the middle of creek arms and just kind of in between structure in the middle of different sections of the lake. And so I like to do that in docks can be really good. Brush piles can be really good. And y'all heard me talking about those the last couple of weeks. Um, but if you can find pond dams, bo uh, uh, brush piles and docks that are in good stop sign areas, maybe it's the mouth of a, a pocket, a good pocket that they might push up into when it gets cool and pull out of when it gets hot, just transition type areas. I've really been kind of running fall patterns out here lately because of all the changes we've had in the water column. And, and if you run enough of them, you usually run into a good little group of fish. And, and a lot of times that is the type of fish that you want for these tournaments, these two pound unders. You're gonna catch a lot of those in those type of areas right now. So uh, that's some good advice for fishing. I think we're gonna kind of wrap that, oh my goodness, the tree we must have told a good secret because the tree's even mad at us about it and <laughs> tried to bomb us there. Billy Joe, be warned later. You might get bombarded by the uh, oak tree. Either one, brother. Get wherever you want to get, my man. Might be a little easier to get up on this one, honestly. Probably from the back with all these cores. But you go ahead. All right, then. Good talk. All right. So we're going to change the pace a little bit. You want to lead it off, Vic, since you haven't got to say anything yet? You want to do something real quick? All right. Cody's got something to say. All right, before we get it on with fun, fun and joking and all this good stuff, uh, I want everybody to take your hats off. Uh, let's have a little prayer. I've got a close friend of mine. Uh, he's having some family issues. Uh, I just want to pray for him and um, for speedy recovery. Um, dear Heavenly Father, we're coming to you tonight in prayer to please bless his family, take care of her, and just uh, make everything okay. And for the tournaments tomorrow and Sunday, please be with all the fishermen, keep them safe, have them, let them have a good time and help the cause, and let's just all have a good time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very much for that, Cody. All right, let's get it going. Y'all want to hear some people talk bad about me and try to embarrass me? It shouldn't be too much of a challenge. I mean, I'm growing a mullet for crying out loud. It ought to be pretty easy, folks. <laughs> and it's not even a real mullet. It's like a half terrible trailer park mullet. It is very much a trailer park mullet. Go ahead, Vic, and I'm going to hand one of y'all the mics because I'll just start talking over him if I get too mad. So. <laughs> yes, because everybody knows anytime somebody starts talking, Billy's going to interrupt you and he's going to talk over you for at least five to ten minutes. Hey, it's going to happen every time. Uh, I guess we decided we was going to roast you for some reason. I don't know why. I'm kind of surprised you made it on time. Pretty much known Billy for probably five or six years now. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it was very bad. It was, it was we uh, come and watched a couple seminars, decided we'd take a trip out with Billy, and we, uh, me and Cody did seminar. actually. We uh, showed up at Oak Ridge Marina at like six o'clock, and well, of course, Billy didn't show up till like 6.30, I think. And, uh, no, he was texting Oh yeah, but anyway, he, he's gonna be late. But uh, we go out, we go hit a couple of generic spots that he takes everybody to, and pretty much the only thing we caught were catfish. So if you guys want to know how to catch catfish, I got all of Billy's hot spots. Uh, pretty much just throw a chatter bait and you're gonna catch them. Um, sorry, Billy. No, don't be sorry. <laughs> go ahead. Please don't. Just remember, I'm going to hold the mic last. This is an opportunity. <laughs> Z, do you want to go? <laughs> this thing, I'll go? Yeah, I'll go. I'll go. I didn't know it was going to get that dark that early. <laughs> oh, we did. Was it too soon? Oh, we well did. played. Well played. <laughs> we went straight low baller right off the bat, didn't we? <laughs> I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs>
Uh, first and foremost, thank every one of y'all for coming out tonight to support an unbelievable organization. Um, you know, we all we all care. That's why we're here. Is that right? So we're gonna draw a line. We're gonna draw a line right here. Okay. When I point to this side, I want to hear everybody yell to the top of their lungs. One. When I point to this side, I want to hear everybody yell to the top of their lungs, tribe, okay? Because that's what we are. We are one tribe and one fight, and we're here to, to raise money for this organization. So here we go. One tribe! One tribe! One tribe! That's awesome. Thank you, guys. Um, now... I'm scared because you know more about me than anybody. It ain't gonna, it ain't gonna take much, Han. Don't worry about it. Uh, um, so, welcome to the roast of your Lake Fork hole buzzard, Billy Lawson. Uh, I, you know, when he called us and asked us to do this, I'm like, who in the hell do you think you are to deserve a roast? I mean, you know, those are usually reserved for you know, more important people important like things. your Ronnie Kellys of the world uh, and your Mike McFarlane's, right? I mean, you know, that, 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 it's usually what we do there. So, you know, right. hey, it's funny, you know, Billy, uh, when Billy and I were talking about this partnership uh, a couple years ago, you know, going into the fish life business, um, you know, that's what we developed. We developed a partnership and, you know, Billy is the cornerstone of that partnership. Uh, as you can, I mean, he's a, he, he does great at making partnerships, kind of like the Ronnie Kellys and the Mike McFarlane's of the world, right? Uh, you know, so, but uh, listen, a piece of advice for everybody, all right? So if you're out there fishing and you see this boat, this black, red, and silver boat pulling up, my advice to you is... <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Keep a crappie rod handy, because when you see it pulling up, just just drop your crappie baits right over the side, and he'll look and move on, and uh, and your spot won't be on the app. Man, what? <laughs> hey. <laughs> oh, that really? Okay. <laughs> hey, what do we got going on here, Hannah? You got a? Is that a? Is that a socket wrench on the end of your your little live scope there? <laughs> that's what it is. That's that's a, that's, a, that's a. That's a red jet, redneck engineered, um, all-purpose live scope transducer holder thinger. <laughs> That's greatness. So, but anyway, we kid because we care. Uh, you're a late fort guy. We love you, brother. And um, O's, you ready? All right. I don't know how many of y'all know this. If you watch Tackle Talk Tuesday, all right, big thing Billy does every Tuesday. A few weeks ago, they were talking about voting him in as president <laughs> of the United States. How many of you remember that? V Billy Lawson for president. And I thought, wow, that's a pretty good idea. You know, and so Billy and I talked about it. You know, uh, we got in the situation room and we discussed it. Yeah. And I really, we, we talked about his platform. What are you going to run on if you're president? And we, we had some conversations about it. And he really told me that he supports BLM. He really does. That is bologna, lettuce, and mayo. Okay, so he was real high on that. I all of those. And he also said one of the, the real big things was uh, it's mandatory that you have a beard and a mullet. Yeah. It's yeah. mandatory. Yeah, so that's one of his platform items also. All right, and then uh, all stores in America must carry camo shorts. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. And then free internet across the internet. Uh, all of America, free internet for everybody. So, and it can only be tuned into Tackle Talk Tuesday. That's right. That's right. You're late for God Nation. And then uh, the most important thing was was the border crisis. All right, Billy's big on the border crisis, and uh, he wants to set boundaries around his fishing spots. Is what the borders are going to be, and he don't want anybody infringing on his territories. And so, uh, there's a lifetime sentence for these old buzzards. Uh, and they are, they're they're going to be relegated to using live bait for grinnell. You hear that, Billy? Yeah, live bait for grinnell. Live bait for grinnell. That's what you're going to have to do. Oh yeah, he's talking about live bait. So otherwise, this is a stellar human being. 
I mean, I've known him for a long time, and he takes a lot of trash. He takes a lot of jabs from us, and uh, but you know what? It's all in fun, and he's a good guy. So y'all are blessed to have him around. All right, so y'all all know who Billy Lawson is. Y'all have heard he's a good fisherman. No, Billy who? I, didn't, I didn't think so either. Billy who? Old buzzer. Old buzzer. All right, so I don't know if y'all noticed this, but he put one of my spots on the fish slide back and dogged me on it. On Facebook. On, it's, Facebook. It's on Facebook too. Yeah. Only reason he's doing that is because he's scared Sunday. He knows the champs going to be there to beat him. All right, that's all it is to him. So, but I do have a little bit of advice for you, Billy. Mm, I need it. Going into the tournament tomorrow. Or Sunday, I guess. Just don't fish it like you did Bass Champs. All right? <laughs> <laughs> that was from Chris. That was from Chris. That was from Chris. Was from Chris. Where, did you, where did you place there at Bass Champs? I, I don't know. What did you place, Bill? Was, was it that, it was man? inside 100. We, we, finished in, we finished inside the top 100. That's all I'm going with. There was only 97 people there, but we, was inside. <laughs> we finished inside the 100. <laughs> but, you know... I really don't have a whole lot to roast him on. These guys kind of stole quite a bit of it. I mean, there's, there's not really a whole lot of bad stuff to say about Billy because there ain't nothing bad to say about Billy. We're just giving him a hard time. But I do want to give him praise. Um, you know, this man right here, he has done a lot for everybody. Uh, not just everybody, he's done a lot for me. Uh, the man's taken me under his wing. He's got me in the garden. He's got me into everything that I've done. And he is supporting me 100%, just like he does all of you guys. Just like what he's doing with this 22 kill tournament. What better person to do this than this man right here? You know, that, that takes a different kind of person and a, and a, a big hearted fella. So uh, I want everybody to give a, a round of applause for Billy Lawson, please. It, it did cost me six packs of crayons, though. So. Oh, yes. And he is our hero. He, he is eating most of them crayons. That was really nice of you to end it the way you ended it. Uh oh, Skeeter's on the loose. The bug. Uh oh, hold on. What do we got here? Man, uh, I can't let them make a fellow marine. Or not a fellow marine. I'm not a marine. Not a, I'm not a yeah. fellow military. But here's a bottle of whiskey for you. And Z Dub. Where's Z at? Z Dub. Z. I know y'all's at. You see what this man's giving us? Yeah. He said it's for me and you right here, baby. Me too. Me too. Roy says me too. Hey, hey my, my man, I think you need a drink right now. I might need one. You know what? I had one and it's gone <laughs> from listening to all this nonsense. Uh, you can just let it run, buddy. This is my son, Ty. Ty, say hi to everybody. Hello. That's my, and then Eli's over there. Say hi, Eli. There's Eli. We got Ty and Eli in the house. My mom's in the house. It's my mom, Cheryl, over there. We're sorry. <laughs> Blame her. That's what I'm going with. It's all her fault. She did just shake her head. She just shook her head like she knew. Oh, she knows. Oh, she knows. <laughs> I'm, there's no way she's allowed to roast me. I can tell you that. Yes, we, we probably need her. No, <laughs> no, that's off limits. No, that's tell. off limits. No, sir. No way. Um, so it's my turn. We're doing good on time here for the concert and all that. So, Vic, I'm really disappointed you shaved your beard. Because as much as you get banned from Facebook and as ugly as that long beard was, I thought you were the whitest terrorist I've ever met. <laughs> Boom, roasted. Z Dub. It's okay sometimes if I tell you I don't know where the fish are. I don't catch them every day, and just because you don't catch them any day doesn't mean I'm always going to be able to help you. Boom, roasted. <laughs> David, I've seen those bowling videos from the 90s. So you wore those tight of polyester pants and fish a drop shot, and you're still telling me you don't like dudes? <laughs> Boom, roasted. <laughs> Maze, I don't even have anything to say about you because you don't matter. Boom, roasted. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you guys coming out and doing this tonight and uh, in all honesty I appreciate everything Cody said about me but the reality is do I try my best to help Cody and David and anybody that I can and any of you guys that's what our content's all about is helping y'all everything that we've done has been designed to help people catch more and bigger fish and love our fellow man but for everything that Cody says about me trying to help there's no way that I could operate and do the things that I do. And it's not that we have like this big, huge platform, but we've got a pretty good group of folks here tonight. And we got a bigger group of people that join us every week online, a lot bigger. And uh, I couldn't do it without the group that you guys have seen come up here tonight and without partners like 22Kill, Blake and Justin and Dan 
and our new new friend Logan that's here tonight. I haven't met her until today, but uh, that whole organization helps us a lot. Cody Brene, my man over there doing registration. Um, I couldn't do any of the stuff. There's no way I could keep up with the volume of stuff that we do without the support of all of them and them helping me. So uh, I really appreciate having them, and I wouldn't want to run with any other pack. Well, thank you all very much for listening to our seminar and our little goofy show that we did. It was a lot of fun. Uh, now we're going to get to the meat of what this event's all about. Uh, Blake, will you come on up here with us, brother? If you guys don't mind jumping down, we'll get Blake up here. Come on, Blake. Give Blake a big round of applause for 22Q. All right, so Blake is one of the men from 22Q that makes the magic happen. Blake is one of their in-house therapists, and Blake is also a former Marine. What's the, the ironic part is me and Blake were literally in the same crappy part of the world at the same exact time once upon a time didn't know each other at all but uh kicked kicked a lot of the same dirt come on in skeeter bug we got the free range fishing puppy out here she's happy to have all y'all here by the way just so y'all know all right so i'm gonna turn this over to blake and i'm blake i really want you to just kind of explain what 22 kill is the purpose that it serves and, and some of the ways that it's helped you as as recovering or i don't know recovering is not the word that's a bad word but Helped you as a Marine kind of inter integrating back into regular society, right? That's kind of the deal. So explain that to them if you don't mind. I appreciate it, Bill. All right. Thank y'all so much for having us. Give a round of applause for these gentlemen for throwing this thing for us. Thank you, guys. Who likes fishing? Who likes hunting? Who likes anything outdoors? Well, that's what I do. So... Growing up in East Texas, I always used to uh, go outside. What are you doing, Han? He's an athlete. Be better. He's an athlete. Right. Okay. So I grew up in East Texas. Always loved hiking, camping, fishing, being outdoors. Also always kind of... There you go. Can y'all hear me now? Better, better, better. Um, one day I always thought when I grew up, I always wanted to have a hand at something to give back to the community that we serve, but also have a little fun doing it. Um, back in the day, in 2012, the statistics came out that 22 veterans a day take their life with their own hand. That really resonated well with me in a bad way. Um, I served uh, in the Marine Corps from 2003 to 2011. Served my time in the dirt, did the whole Fallujah kick, Lost a lot of men, but it doesn't hold a candle to the men and women that I've lost back here stateside. I've lost over 30 personal friends, family, and service members due to suicide. I can't sit here and say that I haven't struggled with my own demons, my own problems and issues and concerns. We didn't necessarily transition well, but I'm learning how to struggle well. Good to go. <clears throat> with that being said, 22 Kill started out as an awareness organization, really kind of being flagshipped on the front of suicide awareness and prevention. We started out with the 22 Kill push-up challenge that went viral. We started kind of uh, getting traction with the honor rings to really be a silent salute for all those men and women that have sacrificed everything. It's kind of like that conversation piece that everybody's wearing that it really sparks, hey, I understand it's okay not to be okay. You give them a nod and it's kind of a little bond there. With that being said, we gained so much traction from the interwebs and the community and stuff like that. We really started to have to really renegotiate on how we had an impact on the community that we served. So we serve veterans, first responders, frontline medical workers, and their families. That's a big population. <laughs> That's a very diverse population. So we had to really start really thinking how to be creative and really have a diverse population have diverse activity bases to really participate in and really find a place in a venue that they found interesting to help them heal. So 22 Kill started out with merging with Stay the Course, which is our mental health traditional side of the house, where we provide counseling services the traditional side uh, and way through evidence-based counseling methods. Um, we do individual counseling. We do couples counseling. Um, we do family counseling. We do a little bit of everything. We do peer-to-peer -peer training and education uh, throughout the fire departments, police departments, anybody that's needing some education for mental health. We all just want to live well and learn how to struggle well. So with that being said, we really started having to really dig uh, deep into our community and really rely on them to help us out, much like 
Everybody here, we can't do what we do without y'all. Just like every man and woman that's ever served or put on a uniform, we can't do it without their support system and their family and friends. Y'all are the reason we put on the damn uniform in the first place. Never forget that. I for sure haven't. So every day <clears throat> we have other non-traditional programs that I'd like to introduce to you guys. Forge, I'm the program manager for that. This is what this kind of event would kind of fall under. We do hiking, camping, fishing, helicopter hog hunts, aerial gunnery shoots, uh, different things on, you know, weapons handling and maintenance and stuff like that. Um, we really try to get you involved in the outdoors in any way we can, just because we felt it firsthand on how it could be therapeutic and help you heal. There's a lot of boats on the water every weekend or in a deer blind that there's conversations relationships and connections that are forged that will pass down a legacy that's worth remembering so <clears throat> with that being said that's a little bit about forge um, we also have some other non-traditional programs i'd like to introduce we have the watch program which stands for we are the children of heroes it really helps embody the children of those that have lost been lost to either suicide or inaction that's a heavy group a lot of these kids need help develop with development and connection and a lot of them get isolated or they don't understand you know that they have needs that need to be met as well and they don't know how to ask for it so we try to get a community that really do does a lot all over the country to bring this connection together with these kids so they have a support system that's been in some, some yeah. similar situations it's okay not to be okay so we also have uh, wind therapy anybody like motorcycles well there's a few people here, but with that being said, we have a great, great uh, non-traditional program that's called Wind Therapy. We really embody being on the open road and focusing on the road ahead. So if you want to <clears throat> get involved with getting out on the road or you don't have a license to ride a motorcycle or you just don't like leather, whatever it is, or don't have any of your own, there's a great community waiting for you. We have great relationships with Maverick Harley Davidson and other JP Cycles and organizations really willing to help you get licensed and certified and also get a bike if you have it. We also have great relationship with financial institutions to get you back in the fight. A lot of us uh, that's transitioning, I don't know if anybody's ever messed around with credit and had a hard time with that, but making dumb decisions. But we can get you back out there so you can get into a place to where you can afford some of these types of therapeutic processes and events and stuff like that by having your own bike or something like that too a boat fishing rod and reel firearms anything like that so with that being said i mean there's a lot of things that we offer but at the same time if we didn't identify that there was a need by you telling us there's a need we wouldn't be where we're at without your support and love and everything like that we wouldn't be where we're at so for me um Getting hit several times with IEDs in Iraq, I started struggling really hard with suicidal ideations, PTS, which is post-traumatic stress. Has anybody ever heard of post-traumatic stress? Right. How many men and women here have served? How many other people have served them? Give them a round of applause. Because without all of the all sacrifices, we'd probably be speaking a different language. <laughs> Let's get real. So, <clears throat> with that being said, being a Marine and a first responder myself, I dealt with that transition. Life hit me in the mouth. I tried to fight back as hard as I could with what I had. It wasn't obviously always the best thing that I had to offer, but it's what I had. So. After I got out, I went back home. I knew I needed an education, a transition, and to do what I wanted to do. My mom was just such a blessing. I come from a single home. I had a lot of people growing up saying I never mount anything. I never do anything worth remembering, <clears throat> which I'm pretty sure that might still be the case. I don't know. But I'm trying. <laughs> With that being said, when I transitioned back, I started focusing on how I can have an impact and what that legacy looked like. And organizations like 22 Kill really stood out to me and I wanted to be a part of that because I have served in the dirt and I have been in the trenches when I got back home dealing with my own demons and I see it every day 
I see families struggling. I see individuals struggling. I want to make sure that everybody here knows I pick up my phone. 22 Kill and One Tribe Foundation, we pick up our phone. So use us and abuse us. That's why we're here. If you or anyone could benefit from any of these programs or treatment or therapy, even if it's just to go eat, to link up and talk to somebody, give us a shout. That's what we're here for. So <clears throat> transitioning back, I started thinking about my family, my friends, and how I would like to be remembered. So I really had to dive deep. I saw a lot of my friends going to funerals. I saw myself going to a lot of funerals. And in my closet, I do not have not one suit that's dedicated for a celebration. It's all for funerals. So every time I go to my closet, before I go to my counseling suite or go to an event, it's a constant reminder of why I'm doing what I'm doing with the people that I'm doing it with. Our, our staff is incredible. I'm telling you, they're better than I'll ever be, but they motivate me to be a better version of myself than I ever was the day before. Each individual that works for One Tribe Foundation and 22 Kill is a veteran, first responder, family member, a direct tie to this population that we serve. They have skin in the game. Use us. It's what we're here for. I'm a mental health clinician there as well. So getting that educational piece, I started really understanding why it was important to ask for help because of that stigma in the Marine Corps and law enforcement. I mean, it was a, it was a sign of weakness to ask for help. How many can relate with that? Back in the day, due to wrongful diagnosis, right? You lost your job or position or you were alienated versus supported and pushed and challenged in a positive way. It was a deterrent to even say anything, to ask for help. That's why the suicidal rates are so freaking high. It's okay not to be okay. Mental health is just like any muscle. You almost have to go to failure to grow. Every experience, every exposure you've ever been experienced or experienced throughout your life, take that lesson. Learn something, pass it down to the next generation. Just like any of your fishing tricks and traits and he put up Cody's uh, spot out there if y'all want to know where his fishing spot is by the way be looking for that but those are the types of things that I challenge you each day when you get hit in the mouth by life take it learn from it grow if you can't do it alone you can't stand alone find a support system that can help you do that I found mine and by being here today you're helping everybody else find theirs so with that being said, when you have families, friends, communities connect, there's nothing we can't do. We're far greater in numbers. So we started out as 22 uh, Kill. We transitioned and outgrew that. 22 Kill is now our um, outreach and educational program. We're not gonna get rid of our roots ever, but we expanded and grew and became the One Tribe Foundation because it takes a tribe, make no mistake. I mean, Billy, honestly need supervision 24 hours seven days a week and it takes all of you to help out with that effort because he would probably make the news however by coming from you know being a marine trying to transition no one had to like to struggle and just push away everything I, and everyone I ever loved um, and being alone and I don't mind it's a dangerous one Without my support system, I don't even think I would be here. Many of you probably haven't said anything to your friends or family or you know somebody directly that has struggled before. That's okay. We always want to be at our best so we can give our best. And that's for sure what we're doing here today. It's people like you, it's people like Billy, it's people like everybody here in support. I mean, this is one of the best weekends ever. And y'all are out here celebrating it with us. That's awesome. So that's a little bit about um, One Tribe Foundation. We have a lot of merch here. We have a lot of uh, auction items that are on the tables. Go take a look at it. We got a lot of cool stuff. Uh, we also have a couple of boats and stuff needed for some of these veterans that are coming out and first responders tomorrow. So if you have a spot available on your boat, please give us a shout over here with Cody or Zach or Billy or myself, and we'll kind of get these guys on board, get them fishing and help them heal. 
Um, and again, this stuff is therapy. When you're out there on the boat, you're talking, you're chit-chatting, you're being able to finally have a venue to release some stress. Release your story, because every time you tell it, it's just like a Coke bottle. You shake it up, you shake it up, you open it, then what? You make a mess. But eventually, you learn lessons throughout the way, learn skills, techniques, and strategies on how to release that pressure by opening that Coke up a little bit to release it. So you're not picking up a mess. You're not losing invaluable resources. So when you're out there on the boat, you're putting lines in. Be okay to talk about some stuff. Be okay to express yourself. This is for you. This is something we really, really look forward to every year. So <clears throat> with that being said, if y'all have any questions for me, these guys, our staff, anything like that, please use us. We have our cards there. If you have anybody that could benefit from any of our treatments, therapies, or just events or retreats, please give us a shout. We've got a, a website that just changed uh, to onetribefoundation.org. Um, if you go to 22kill.com, it'll just kind of relay you to it anyway. Um, but yeah, spread the word. Um, and again, we can't thank y'all enough for being here and supporting us in our mission. And at the end of the day, y'all are helping us go to less funerals. Straight up, let's love hard, live well, and learn to struggle well together, okay? I appreciate that. Dwight Mallory, 22 Kill, y'all. Um, let me tell you something. I've, I've been fortunate enough to, to go over to these guys' location, meet with them, talk with, talk with Blake, you know, Justin, uh, Jake Chick. He'll be out here tomorrow, I believe. Uh, you'll get a chance to meet him. He's the CEO of One Tribe Found or 22 Kill, One Tribe Foundation. Um, man, if you listen to these guys talk for five minutes, the passion that they exhibit, it, it makes you want to run through a brick wall. Um, one thing I'll also say as well, um, because of our partnership with 22 Kill, I've been able to offer my services. Any, they know anytime anyone needs a, to, a day on the water or whatever, I'll take a day off from my regular job and I'll take them. If anybody else anywhere has, if you have 10 or 12 acres of land and you can sponsor a, a, a night out, a camping trip for, for Blake and a couple of his guys, Blake, tell the truth, uh, there's no better place to, 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 get, to, to get somebody talking than sitting around a campfire. Absolutely. You By know? default, those walls come down. Yeah, absolutely. So listen, um, get involved, uh, you know, you will not regret it. Now, I will say this. We got Billy Joe coming up in just a little bit. Blake, I'm going to ask you and Zach to evacuate the boat premises. Uh, Tad, Billy Joe, why don't y'all make your way on up here? And we'll get, get just a little couple minutes break, and then we're going to get this show started. Hey, hey, this is my boat. <laughs> I know. Get the heck. I a front row seat from the well, yeah. everybody's donating stuff. You donated your boat tonight to the show. <laughs> How expensive is this? Like stage concert stage how expensive <laughs> is that earlier i looked at blake i said man that, that's pretty good for just making it up on the go and just creating a stage he goes well it's the most expensive stage i've ever seen all right so here's what the, here's what's going to happen this is this is tad marler and billy joe jones billy joe music is where you can find her you're going to follow her right now pull your phones out go follow her on facebook instagram billy joe facebook instagram tiktok i think right i think i got that right or BillyJoeMusic.com. Uh, very talented young lady is going to put on a show for us now. We appreciate that. But So what's going on here is, is she has donated her time. She does this for a living. This is her job. She's very, very good, as you're about to find out. But she has donated her time tonight and, and isn't charging us anything for this. But what we're going to do, we got a tip jar over there. That's for that's to pay Billy Joe for her singing. I said, well, we'll at least put a tip jar out, pass around. We'll get some folks to put 5, 10, 15, whatever they can put in there. She said, no, we can put the jar out but it's going to 22 Kill. So everything you put in the tip jar for the great music that you're about to hear is going to 22 Kill. Big round of applause for Billy Joe. If we could, if everybody could do me a favor right now, we're gonna stop everything we're doing under the pavilion and I need everybody to stand up, remove your covers. There's a flag right there. We're gonna have a little national anthem to get this thing going right. Can you see Bob and Dawn's early light? One so proudly we had Had the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad 
broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rockets rang the roar her bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that Star spangled banner head wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Now it's a party, right? <laughs> now it's a party. All right, so we all know Billy Joe's fixing to rock it out, so I just want to make sure we're all clear. The mosh pit is in front of this boat. Don't, it's not around this boat over here. The mosh pit's going to be right here on, on this deck right here. I got about 260 that says it's going to get pushed that way. <laughs> Billy Joe Music from Grand Saline, Texas. East Texas owned. She's got 85 kids. Where's Justin at? Is Justin around? Justin's in the I back. I have 85 kids. Her and Justin Billy, got 18,000 kids. Listen, this is kids, not really so Billy Joe right. time, okay? Oh, okay? It's not. It's not. So I have four kids. My husband has three kids. We have seven kids. So if you want to say 85, then it's probably right. But. I'm a fishing guy, not a math major, Billy Joe. Hey, y'all give it up for Billy Joe. She's about to kick it off. Take over, Billy Joe. It'll be much better from this point on. I promise.